Okay. If you're ready, Amy, are you ready? Okay, and we'll talk over questions after that. Well, it's good to get back on the field. Uh, obviously, really disappointed in uh, Saturday. We uh, we really like our team and our players, but we're, we got to execute more consistently. And we've played well in spurts, and uh, we just, we got to play better. And it's a matter of, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over and uh, executing at a high level, you know, more than sometimes. And that's what, what came up. It's these small little details that make the difference in the game. And, uh, you know, it showed up in every phase on offense, defense, special teams, and it's the smallest little thing. And when you play against a really good team, they'll, you know, they'll hurt you if you don't continue to execute at a high level. So that's what happened. And uh, we talked about that a lot today. And I know that guys are eager to get back out here and go get to work. Obviously, uh, another tremendous opportunity for us this weekend against a great opponent. And it's going to take a great week of practice. Speaking as a, a former defensive player, a defensive-minded coach, how tough is it when the offense doesn't get going early, as you guys have kind of struggled to do this Team year? Team game. I mean, every, we got to help the defense, offense, special teams. Everybody helps each other. So that's, uh, you know, everybody has to be better. Everybody. How did the team come out today at practice? Practiced hard. We've practiced hard. We play hard. It's not for uh, lack of effort, but unfortunately, effort alone does not win. And you have to execute. And you have to do it over and over and over again, no matter the environment. And that's what it takes to be successful. And we've done it at times. So you can't, you know, we don't lose sight of that either. Like there's times in the game where we executed well. And, uh, but we're not doing it consistently enough. And that's, that's the issue, and it's small little things. It's details, it's splits, uh, receiver, it's route depth, it's uh, communication and protection, it's eye progression at the quarterback position, it's uh, you know defensive line, you know gap integrity things in the run game, it's tackling, it's leverage in the pass game. I mean, it's just small little details, and when we do it right, we play fine and play well. And uh, we just don't hadn't done it consistently enough in the last two games uh, to be successful. So that's what. That's what we got to do. That's what I was going to ask you. It's not a, a common theme from one play to another. No. It's kind of detailed. I mean, I wish it was because yeah. then yeah. you just say, hey, we just do this and right. you fix everything. Yeah, yeah I, wish, I wish it was that simple, but it's just, you know, uh, there's, you know, it takes 11 guys on every single play. And, uh, you know, when you play good teams and with talented players, they'll make you pay if you don't. And that's, that's exactly what happened. So, really, you know, we've got great guys and they're playing hard, they're practicing hard, and we got to continue to do that, but we got to. You know, there's nobody to blame but ourselves. It starts with me, coaches, and players. We just got to execute more consistently. That's what's got to happen. You talk about it being widespread. Are the breakdowns repeatedly in the same areas, or are they are they being addressed one week, okay, and being corrected, and yeah. then it's a breakdown in another area? It's not even an area or a position group. It's not one single technique, you know? It's uh, play here or there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 11 guys doing their job. I mean, in the fourth quarter, it was – well, one possession game that's third down and four, they ran inside zone, which they ran the entire game. We had the same defense that we called earlier versus inside zone and stopped it for one and, go, and it happened to go for seven because we, you know, we played it wrong. And it's just not because the guy didn't want to play it right, but we just, the uh, discipline and the uh, technique, we got to be really good technically. Uh, and it's, we made a mistake. And that's what, it, when you go against a good team and you make a mistake like that, they can make you pay and pay back, pay dearly. So that's what happened. We just got to play better. I mean, it's in, you know, I know that encompasses a lot of things, but that's that's what's going to take. Was that the play where Jordan kind of got sucked up into the right side? There's uh, there was a few guys on that play who played it poorly, you know. So there was more than one, and there wasn't that one play. We had uh, a number of plays throughout the game. You know, it's not one player or one play. It's a cumulative effect of those things. And uh, when you you're playing a good team with really talented players, that's They'll make you pay. Now That's that we know that uh, D. Rob is out for the season, what's going to what's going to take to try and, and fill some of that production? Next man up. I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, injuries occur, and you guys, um, you know, got to step up. That's what's going to have to happen. You know, and it's not just the receivers; it's the O line, it's the, uh, you know, the running backs, it's the defense, it's the kicking game, it's everybody. So, are there any? Is there anyone on the roster you feel like can can kind of step in as as far as a big play threat? We're, we'll find out. You know, we'll find out. You know, that's uh, Demetrius. Obviously, a talented guy. He's not able to play. So uh, we're going to play with the guys that, that are able. We, we hate losing Demetrius. I feel bad for him. It hurt for guys like that when when they go down for the year. But 
we're going to play with the guys that are that are able to play and out here working their butt off uh, every day in practice. Is is there you mentioned you know the the O line and the running backs and the kicking? I mean, is there kind of a cascade effect? Well, you don't have because he's a very particular set of skills for him. Does that kind of cascade into the rest of the offense a little bit? What do you mean? Oh, I mean you lose a guy who's a Blitnikoff Award watch list, or watch list guy, a guy who set records last year. Yes, next man up, but that's that's a guy who is yeah. We wouldn't want to lose any player, so. Any player on our team, we don't want to lose. And when you, uh, he was a starter for a reason, and uh, he's a really talented guy. But uh, these things happen, and it's unfortunate. You feel bad for him, but nobody in our conference, nobody we played cares. So we have to come back and practice, and everybody's got to step up their game a little bit and continue to be as good as we can be. You lose guys like D. Rob and Trey Watson. I mean, teams can't generally get over losing game changers like that. How have the guys done so far in kind of that next man up and filling in? Yeah, I think that's just how we approach it. I don't, um, again, we I, we all feel for those guys because they want to be out here and they, they want to be playing and they're not able to and it's just part of the game. Um, so, but again, you know, we're still playing Saturday and we're going to practice like crazy this week and prepare as best we can. And uh, when we execute, uh, consistently, we do good things, offense, defense, special teams. But we gotta, we just gotta be better there. We gotta be more consistent and more detailed in our assignments, and that's what it's gonna take for our team. This is the for the biggest. It seemed like the biggest play count for uh, Jordan Kanashik. How do you, how do you assess his play? Uh, I think he did some good things, uh, in you know, in terms of being physical and tackling. Uh, Jordan's a physical guy. Uh, I think he's gonna have plenty to. He did have plenty to clean up. And, uh, but we're excited to have him back. He really helps us. So, uh, again, just continue to build on that. What do you think of uh, the game time for the Washington game? Got announced as 7.45. Uh, how do you feel about playing so many night games? Uh, how do I feel? Uh, Sleepy. Yeah, I mean, I, they tell us when the games are. Um, if it was up to us, we wouldn't choose 7. What, Whatever what was 745. it was, 7.45. We wouldn't choose 7.45 if it were up to us, but it's not up to us. So mm -hmm. we're going to prepare and get ready to play 7.45. I don't know how much you've dug into it yet, but what are your early impressions of, of Washington? Really, you know, that's a really, really good football team. Very uh, skilled. They're physical up front. Both fronts are very, very physical. Really well coached. Uh, it would be a great challenge for us. Uh, and I keep saying this every week, but it's really just about how well you know, we prepare and how well we can play on it, every given play. And that's what it's, it's going to come down to. We've got a ton of respect for them as a program, their coaches and their players. They have the utmost respect for all of them. Uh, so it'll be a great opportunity for us. We'll be excited to play. There were guys on that team that attributed a large part of their run last year to what Tori worked with them uh, in years past. When you, what, what first struck you about Tori when you when you guys worked up uh, yeah. there together? Tori's a man. I can go on forever. He's a he's a special guy. He's uh, not only his knowledge of strength and conditioning, and you know that's a specific skill. And uh, he his. Uh, demeanor and the way he interacts with our players and how important he is to our program I, I, I don't think people realize and so uh, I just think the world of him he's a, a big time coach he's a just an un unbelievable human being and uh, he is such a important piece of our program and just we're, we're all fortunate that he's here. Ross is completing under half of his passes over the last three games. Does something need to change on the play calling to get that number up in the future? Is it just a matter of execution? Yeah, I would. It's a matter of, you know, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about, all the little details, and it's, it's, the com completions are, yeah, the quarterback's obviously involved in the completions, the receivers are involved, so is the O line and the protection and the timing and the route depth, and it's just there's a lot more involved than just, you know, the quarterback. Obviously, he, he has to do better, and he will, and he knows that. But uh, you know, I would uh, be wary of putting it just on the quarterback. Last week, talking to a couple of the guys, they said that uh, one of the things that Ross does best is just flush plays, good, bad, whatever. You don't know it based on what he's doing right there. Is that a, a pretty accurate assessment? And how yeah. important is that to have a quarterback be able to say, "Look, man, whatever happened is, is in the past," and not get caught up in the, you know? Here here. Right, yeah, don't ride the roller coaster. Right. I think, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of truth in that in terms of how you approach the next play, but I also would say, you know, 
you don't forget about it. You learn from it, good or bad. Right. You got to learn from that, and because you don't, whether if you make a mistake versus a certain look or a certain throw or whatever, you don't want to say make the same right, mistake right, again. Right, right. So being able to learn from it and then move move forward, good or bad. You know, looking looking through the windshield, not the rearview mirror. You know, so he's got that, and uh, you know, I think a lot of guys on the team do. We just gotta, you know, you don't get do overs. Right. You don't get do overs. So. We got to be more consistent in our execution across the board, and uh, you know we got to keep pushing. And they came out today and, and worked really hard. So it's not for for lack of their energy and attention at, at practice. We just got to take that, and you know it's got to show up on Saturdays. All right, everybody good.